hello everyone welcome to this video on group 15 elements and the reason I am uh, like dealing with individual groups in P block elements chapter is that when we take the modular approach when we divide the chapter into sub modules and then even more sub modules it's easy to learn and it's actually your brain can uh, take more data and you can uh, pretty much like to the complete chapter in this approach and I use a uh, use this approach and I can tell you that it's it's better than just uh, doing the whole chapter in one go so let's start with the first group which is the group 15 and as you can see that this is a periodic table and nitrogen is heading this group and you can observe that this is the third group in the periodic table in the P block and by the way if you don't know what the P block is well it starts from this boron family and then we have the carbon family and then when we have the nitrogen family which is uh, what we have what we are dealing with today uh, the electronic configuration of this is NP3 and NS2 also which sits before this and we are going to talk about this uh, later in this video but then we have the oxygen family which has oxygen sulfur and selenium telenium like that and then we have all the electronegative mm -hmm. elements fluorine chlorine bromine and then we have the noble gases so in total we have one two three four five six groups in the p block uh, but today we are only focusing on this so it has one two three four five elements and as I already told you nitrogen sits at the top then we have phosphorus then we have arsenic then we have antimony and then we have finally bismuth you can just ignore this last element because this is a synthetic metal and we are not concerned about this element okay and one thing to note here is that helium which also sits in the P block actually has a electronic configuration of 1s2 so this is definitely an exception but uh, you should know that it's a member of P block family okay so let's move to the second slide so in this I have taken the images from Wikipedia of all the elements occurring in their natural state so we have uh, we I have not added the image of nitrogen because hopefully that's obvious that it's a diatomic gas and when we think about nitrogen uh, we generally conceptualize it as a naturally occurring gas which is the case but after nitrogen we have phosphorus which is a non-metal and then we have arsenic and antimony these two guys are metalloids and then finally we have bismuth uh, bismuth element which is a metal okay let's move to the third slide so I mentioned three words right now metals metalloids and non-metals what do I mean by that well hopefully you are already familiar with metal and non-metal but a metalloid is something that sits between the two it has uh, partial properties of metals and then partial properties of non-metals so hopefully that makes sense now how can you memorize which of the elements uh, in the group 15 is a non-metal or a metalloid or a metal well it's actually pretty simple this is how I learned it first of all you have to remember the order of occurrence of uh, group 15 elements so it's going to be something like nitrogen phosphorus arsenic antimony and bismuth and then just take the two elements in a pair so in the first pair we have nitrogen and phosphorus nitrogen we know it's a diatomic gas so it's a non-metal same is the case with phosphorus so the first two elements or the first pair is a non-metallic pair and then we have a middle pair in which we have arsenic and antimony these two elements are metalloids and then finally we have bismuth which is the metal and hopefully that makes sense because all the elements that are typically at the bottom most uh, layer of the periodic table are generally metals only okay so this is a way uh, to memorize uh, which of the elements is metal non-metal or metalloid let's move on let's move to the fourth present uh, fourth slide okay so this is a table that I have taken from the NCRT textbook 
and I want to focus on the physical properties of group 15 elements and you can notice that all the elements are mentioned here as column headers so we have nitrogen we have phosphorus arsenic antimony and bismuth and by the way if you cannot re uh, memorize all these elements in the uh, specific order well you can uh, check out many one of many mnemonics on the internet in order to memorize this but you have to memorize these elements in their specific order and the way I did it was pretty simple actually I just wrote it down like three four times and then I studied their physical and chemical properties and when I did that I remembered and I memorized uh, these elements in a natural way so hopefully you can uh, do in a similar way you can learn in a similar way but let's focus on the physical properties for now and I want to talk about all these properties so let's talk about atomic number this is pretty simple atomic number actually represents the number of protons so when we move down the group when we move from nitrogen to bismuth what you will expect is the that the size is going to increase and the number of protons is going to increase so what that means is that atomic number and atomic mass is going to increase now electronic configuration I want to talk specifically about this so let's move to the next slide let's move to the fifth slide okay so I already mentioned that for a P block element for a general P block mm -hmm. element the electronic configuration is NS2 and then NP126 what that basically means is that the outermost orbital outermost uh, shell has two orbitals S and P S orbital is completely filled with two, uh, two electrons so it will exactly have two electrons always but the P orbitals is not completely filled or it can be completely filled so it can have electrons ranging from 1 to 6 and specifically if we have exactly three electrons in the P orbital then we have the following configuration NS2 NP3 and this is the configuration of group 15 elements and one thing to note again is that helium has an electronic configuration of 1s2 but it's but it's still a p block element okay so i want to talk about the second property which is the which is the atomic and ionic radii so as you can probably guess when we move down the group from nitrogen to uh, bismuth uh, first of all let me let me jump back to the periodic table as we move down the group from nitrogen to bismuth the the size of the element increases and what that means is the radii is going to increase and one thing to note here is that when we move from nitrogen to phosphorus there's a considerable amount of increase in the radii but when we move from arsenic to bismuth I mean ars arsenic to antimony or antimony to bismuth there's a very less amount of increase in the radii and this is because of the involvement of uh, d orbital as we know that d orbital is actually closer to the nucleus so the effect is that when we have a completely filled d orbital what that means is that the size is going to increase when we move down but there's going to be less pronounced increase so it, the dif difference is not going to be that much so can you write the electronic configuration of all these elements well let's try let's try to do that for nitrogen we have we have 1s2 oops let me switch to white we have 1s2 for nitrogen right 1s2 and then we have 1 p3 and then we have oops this is no this is not right we have 1s2 and then we have 2s2 and then we have 2p3 we can also represent this like electronic configuration of helium we indicate this by putting helium in brackets and we know that electronic configuration of helium is 1s2 and then we can simply write 2s2 and 2p3 so this is the electronic configuration of nitrogen 
you can uh, in a similar way calculate the electronic configurations of all the elements and it's actually given in this table that we that we saw earlier so you can see all the electronic configurations now I want to talk about the the fourth property I guess the third property which is the ionization enthalpy so I want to talk about ionization enthalpy so ionization enthalpy decreases down the group because of the gradual increase in atomic size and this makes sense because when we move down the group the metallic character increases okay so not much here in this uh, property and let's move to the final property which is the oops let me change to black which is electronegativity so by electronegativity we mean uh, generally the tendency of an element to pull electrons that's how you can imagine electronegativity so again let's move back to the periodic table and let's uh, consider this group well as you as you move from bottom to the top the electronegativity definitely increases and th this is because if you consider the reverse case when we move from top to bottom new orbitals start to add up they start adding up and what that basically does is that it increases the size uh, distance from the nucleus to the outermost shell and this decreases the electronegativity property so not much here in the electronegativity property and we are only left with one final thing so let me cover that so first of all let me do this okay so physical properties of group 15 elements so let me write it down here that all first of all all the elements in group 15 are polyatomic now what do I mean by polyatomic well what that basically means is that all the elements can form molecules in which there are more than two atoms so uh, nitrogen can form a molecule uh, in which it has like more than there are more than two atoms involved in that molecule and similarly for uh, the case for phosphorus arsenic antimony and bismuth so all the elements are polyatomic so let me label this as the first property and then the second property in the second property we have well it's just the same as what we saw in I think in the sec in the third slide this is the second property nitrogen and phosphorus are non-metals the first pair is a non-metallic pair and then the middle pair which is the arsenic and antimony it's actually a metalloid pair and then the finally the last element which is left is a metal so this is the this is the second property all right so this is the second property met oops metals non metals and metalloids so what's the third what's the third property let's look at the third property now the third property says that when we move from the top to the bottom the boiling point increases and this is because uh, when we move from top to bottom uh, we have the more metallic nature and when we have more metallic nature the boiling point increases this is because of metallic bonding okay so let's so let's say let's write it down boiling point increases as we move down the group hopefully that makes sense the metallic bonding increases down the group and therefore the boiling point also increases the final property is that all the elements show allotrophy so all the elements let me first write it down then I'll explain you all the elements show allotrophy allotropy so what do I mean by allotropy well allotropy is just a property of an element in which 
by same molecular formula there can be different physical states of that element so uh, in the future videos I'm going to talk about uh, like the phosphorus element and then we are going to see the allotropic nature of phosphorus and not only phosphorus actually all the elements in this group which is the 15th group they show this property of allotropy and which this is basically the same as saying that all the elements occur in multiple physical states and that's about it but the only thing to note here is that nitrogen which definitely is the uh, first member of this group does not show this property so nitrogen does not satisfy this property and this is because of like peculiar nature and anomalous property anomalous nature of nitrogen and we are also going to study this uh, next in the chemical property section so hopefully you found this video helpful and I'm going to make the next presentation on the chemical properties of group 15 elements.